This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI Special Agent and Chief of the Counterintelligence Behavioral Analysis Program, Robin Dreek. Where do you think this goes uh, from here? Do you think we're going to see him take the stand at some point? And if Chad Daybell takes the stand, what does he say? I tell you, I hope we do. I do too. <laughs> uh, I think that'd be, yeah, that'd be must see TV right there. I It will be. And I think that'll be his doom. Um, I don't think he's going to present well on, on the stand. I think he's going to be destroyed under cross um, because what do you say? I, yeah. I, 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 I mean, his texts alone is what completely, I think, derailed him mm-hmm. in, in this whole thing. Remember, at the start of this, before we actually had the evidence of the text, you know, and we were going through the trial, I was thinking, hey, he might have a shot here of some sympathy votes that, hey, Lori's the one that manipulated me, and woe is me, she was a grand architect of all this, and all, lo and behold, uh, knew, you know, mm-hmm. he is completely 50% at least culpable in everything that transpired. Yeah. And so... I think him getting on a stand would just validate more of the same. And so I hope we do see him, but it, it, it really, it'll be interesting to see what his defense, his defense. I, wants know. To do. I mean, I'm, I'm really wondering if we're going to see him because it's usually kind of a last ditch effort. If your defense is not going very well and it clearly isn't so far. Um, he, I mean, and, until they take their turn and it's not just cross, unless they have something up their sleeve that I, I highly doubt that they do. I, I don't know why you wouldn't let him take the stand at this point, because uh, there's uh, unless maybe in some magical way, he'll present this, this real, Oh my gosh, you know, guys, I didn't know about this type. I, but I highly doubt it. I'm going to guess. No. Yeah. And, and let's let, you know, seal an envelope and open it afterwards and see if so. And here's my thought process with just a few data points is why I don't think he will. He seemed very aware when he got arrested or, or brought in for questioning, not mm-hmm. even under arrest yet, that, you know, I'm not I'm not coming back out. Mm-hmm. Like, this is it. You'll never see me again. So he was very aware of what he was being brought in for. And in my mind, that that is the, the biggest piece of thing that undermined any defense ever right there. He was completely aware that I, because he knew what he did. Mm-hmm. And so I think a combination of him accepting at that point his fate and the fact that I don't think I think he's very aware of how little charisma he actually has. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he's self-aware enough to know that eh, I'm not going to do myself any favors. And I don't think his defense is going to press him either way. I think the defense is going to put it on him whether he wants to or not. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I'm, I'm very much questioning whether he's even going to save his life at this point. If John Pryor has the capability to do so, Uh, just some of the lines of questioning and some of the things he's been asking witnesses, He's literally surprised by some of the answers. <laughs> it's like you should kind of have an idea where you're going with this before you ask the question, because some of them have really, you know, just crucified them. I wonder if he wants to save his life. Isn't that an interesting question, too? Is is oh, like uh he's kind of Chad like a himself. black sheep in here, and he realizes what a horrible human being Chad Daybell is. So and we're gonna let this and also, guy and, yeah. and also Chad himself. I'm be curious. Yeah. It's almost like um suicide by cop, but suicide by jury. Yeah. It's an interesting It's interesting, thought. isn't it? It is. I mean, so again, out of the two of them, Chad and Lori, he seems the most um he seems the most aware of what's going on in, in a sense of reality. I think he spun a web of stupid mm-hmm. um to satisfy his own insecurities and needs. Uh, financially, sexually, and all these things. But I think he's aware enough that um, he did bad things. I really think he knows that. Yeah. Uh, But he just can overcome his own impulses and the glorification that Lori gave him. And, you know, life behind bars, that kind of awareness. See, Lori's living in a fantasy world. No matter how long she's in jail, she's she's in la-la land. Mm -hmm. And so she's completely content with the fantasy world, I think, that she's created. But I don't know if he's got the capability of that. So if you have that kind of awareness that I'm going to spend the rest of my life in here and I'm this really bad person, 
why not just let it end? I don't know. It, it's a really interesting thing. I've never done studies on on that, but it, it's a. I think it's an interesting question to see how it goes. It'd be highly unethical as an attorney to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm not thinking but, of the attorney. I was really. I yeah. wasn't referring to the attorney. Okay. I was really thinking of Chad himself. You know, is is he really? How hard is he really battling for his life? I wonder. Yeah, I, I mean, you can really. I mean, well, look at Lori. I mean, there were the death wasn't on the table, but the fact that they're just like. Where we have no defense, we're not going to do anything, and ultimately that's her choice. If she said you can't uh, bring Chad into this or anything, uh, you know. It, it, but again, she was in La La Land, uh, and I think he's a little bit more competent. Do you think anything in this is going to affect the you know the the Lori Daybell trial that we're going to see coming up here, uh, possibly later in the year uh, on the charges that she has against her? Now that we've seen how things have gone uh, for for Chad in, in his round and how much they're trying to pin uh, her way. I think, I, I think if she had any chance of anything, it's completely flushed as well. Yeah. I, I think, I think the world's been really exposed to how bad of human beings they both were mm -hmm. uh, even more so than we, I mean, I think we got exposed to a lot of it in her trial and even more so in his trial. I mean, there, there's sides of him being part of this and them collaborating together that, you know, I, I was, I was like, wow, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't think it helped her at all. I think, I think everything's, I think everything's going against both of them. And, and, and back to him briefly, I think if we see him take the stand and truly battle in, in battle in a way of trying to throw himself in a, in a, like a mercy kind of way in front of the jury, I think that'll be a sign that he is actually cares about battling for his life. But if we don't see him take the stand and kind of stay silent there and not say a word, it, I, it'll be interesting. Yeah. I, I, I think he might be resigned at that point. Yeah. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.